partial block on that. Jenny Duhard now with the ball out top. This is Dressler. Working a two-man game now, swinging out the record. She takes over the starting point guard position. Barb Derry got some time in there. That is just a two, but Lindy Jones starting off hot. Three for three from the field, 6 nothing IPFW. Back quickly on the break that time. Paige Carey, number 50. Lady Dines didn't get back on defense on that uh, trip down. Now they try to press. Becker now breaks it with a dribble. Has some numbers. Give the ball tied back up. to the Lady Dons. Alternate possession will be IPFW ball. 6-2, just over two minutes into this contest. A game IPFW really has to win because they have a big one coming up Saturday night. Jones with her first miss of the night. IPFW 3 for 4 from the field at that point. Working baseline. This is Carey misses. Newhart pulls the board down. Right now the Lady Dines have a height advantage inside and they're taking full advantage of the height by controlling the boards. It's one and done for uh, the Lady Panthers on their trips down court. Jones with the rebound, can't get it to go. Kim Bong comes out with the ball, ripped away, new hard, and one. It comes. Her first two of the game. New hard now with the free throw. First team foul on Kentucky Wesleyan. Almost kept alive by Kim Recker on the rebound. Vaughn brings it up for the Lady Panthers. This is Vaughn now working Lost down, the ball. stripped away. Number three turnover for Kentucky Wesleyan. This is Recker on top. Jones looking inside once Kim Recker underneath. And the first IPFW tournament. Both teams kind of struggling to get in the flow offensively. Eight to two now, just over three minutes. This is Kim Bond with the jumper. Eight to four, and we mentioned, Steve, that Kentucky Wesley just does not shoot well from the field. 37% from two-point range, 24% behind the arc. This is Jones now, wants to work it inside Newhart. Kim Recker, lob pass, Newhart with a spin and kiss, doesn't go. Kim Recker with the board. There was a mismatch inside the 5'9", McClellan has no way to guard Jenny Newhart. Lady Don's recognized that, got the ball to her. Kim Recker will shoot a pair of free throws. Kim averaging 6.7 points a game. She gets the first, have another one coming. First substitution of the contest, number 45, Jill Burness. Who's been hot of late for the Lady Panthers. 6-1, now that gives Kentucky Wesleyan Lady Panthers a little hind underneath. Wrecker misses the second. Jones comes out of there with the board. Inside Wrecker knocked away. And Wesleyan on the push. To the glass and home. Heather McClellan, her first bucket of the night, number 11. And another turnover. Back to back turnovers for IPFW. Third of the contest. A little careless with the ball. Carey with the board inside. Bad and the foul. Up. Paige Carey wasn't uh, blocked off the board there. She got the rebound. Now she's going to the line. Nine to six, 15.46 left in the first half. And Carey on the line for two. Now substitutions for IPFW. Pam Edwards coming in. Amy Perkins in as well. And Michelle Conley coming in. Wrecker on the foul. And uh, Elaine Kleinfelter is going to take a timeout, talk things over. One point it was a two, now nine six.
wants to stem the tide a little bit. IPFW, two straight turnovers and getting beat on that press now. Now she has the opportunity to do the things she couldn't do last year, and that's like bring in a whole new wave of players. Well, Steve, she couldn't bring in three new players at the end of last year, so it, it has. And I uh, spoke with uh, Coach Kleinfelter yesterday about that. And that last year, it gave them the idea that they could compete with smaller numbers, but the numbers this year have given them such, such a mindset now that they feel they're going to be able to play hard 40 minutes game in and game out. Well, they have a lot of experienced veterans on the team, and they've got that infusion of youth with a, a good freshman class, like uh, Wendy Recker stepped up into the starting lineup as a freshman. So not only can she, she go to the bench, but her bench is experienced now. If you go down the IPFW roster, eight freshman players on this 16-member team. Kim Recker, as we mentioned before, starting her third contest of the night. Amy Perkins was the starter last year, and she had to play a lot of minutes at the point guard position. So we have Perkins and Recker, Don Dressler, Michelle Conley, and Pam Edwards back after a, a year where she missed the entire season because of a leg injury. Kelly's tendon, she is back. She's working her way back into 100% shape. Carey now at the line for two, tries to cut the gap. Nothing but iron. She's the best free throw shooter on that team at 76%. Gets the second to fall. 9-7 contest now. And Kentucky Wesleyan going to lay off the press this time down the floor. Now we have an interesting uh, lineup in Steve. Recker, who is point guard, has relinquished that to Amy Perkins now. You've got a smaller lineup in there. Take Newhart out. Ham Edwards now in the post. Perkins looking. This is Dressler. Wendy Recker now with the ball, looking inside. Seven on the shot clock. Pam Edwards got to go up with it. Dressler, two, one. And that is a turnover. IPFW, that did not draw any orange at all. This is Kim Bond now with the push. Carey, that's a three. Got it. Something they don't do very often, but they take the lead with that shot. 10-9 at the 15-minute mark, and well, we set it up as Kentucky Wesleyan being a poor shooting team right now. They are filling it up from the outside. Five of nine from the field, including that three. Dressler, free throw line, no good. Pulled down, Sharice Thompson, number 40. Called her name much, she is number 40, Sharice Thompson. Heather McClellan, this is Kim Bond inside. 45, Jill Burness with the miss. Good defense by Edwards, sealed off the rebound, got the ball back for the Lady Dons. Before the injury, that's one of Pam's strengths, was she was an outstanding rebounder. Coming in off the bench is the sixth player, Edwards, in the lane. And that gives a lead back to IPFW at 11-10. PFW showing 2-3 zone now. Trying to bunch it up inside, make them take the outside shot. Sag on Burness when they can. Number 45 for Kentucky Wesleyan, 6-1. Been scoring well of late. This is Kim Vaughn on the outside, just seven on the clock. Heather McClellan with the stroke. 12-11 now and the press back on. And we got a foul. That's going to be only the third team foul on Kentucky Wesleyan. See so who picked that up, Heather McClellan did. Rather pointless foul, way out there. Lindy Jones back in the lineup for the Lady Dons. Lindy started off hot, hit three of her first three shots, actually missed one after that. Started out with six points. IPFW. Wendy Recker set down. Have some substitutions for Kentucky Wesleyan. Number 10, Heather Mercer is in the contest. Number 25, Rachel Scott in as well. This is Conley with the ball outside, Perkins. Inside, Dressler on the, on the block that time. Just a nice spin move by Dressler. And she'll go to the line for a three-point play opportunity. 
McClellan picks up her second foul in the last minute. They do not want to lose her. She is Kentucky Wesleyan's leading scorer at 13 and a half a game. Dressler now with a chance for a three-point play. Got it. 14-12 to count IPFW. Kentucky Wesleyan now against a 2-3 zone again. Clellan clanking, follows, gets the rebound basket. Six for Heather McClellan, 14-14 tie. This is Perkins now with the ball. No 10-second uh, timeline in women's basketball. There's a 35-second shot clock, though. 15 on the clock now. Inside, Edwards drop, step, and go. Looks like she's back in shape. She's two for two, and she's got a board coming in. You get her the ball that close to the basket, she's going to do some damage. This is McClellan with a head fake inside. Burness getting loose, got away with a walk, and going to pick up a foul. I believe that's on Michelle Conley, her first. Yep, it is indeed. Second team foul on IPFW. Been a pretty clean uh, game thus far. Only six fouls called in the first seven and a half minutes. Jenny Newhart coming back in. She's the second leading scorer for IPFW behind Lindy Jones at 12-7. A game, Lindy averaging 15. This is Joe Burness with two. They're down by one. Amber Ness ties the game up at 16. Well, IPFW jumped off eight to two. Now they're having trouble getting the ball in bounds. Dressler runs it down. Perkins now has numbers if she can push. Nice dish. Edwards ball fake in traffic now. This is Dressler. Good decision on Pam's part that time. There's no need to rush a shot. Good defense by the Lady Panthers from Kentucky Wesleyan. Seven on the clock now. Perkins looking for help. Jones behind the arc. Got to go up with a new hard three. Misses. And Rachel Scott pulls down the board. Chance for Kentucky Wesleyan to take the lead now. Jones might have gotten away with a foul. Uh, Dressler picks up. The loose ball, Newhart to Perkins in the lane. Perkins yes. scores. Usually Perkins makes the dish. This time she received it. 18-16, Perkins first two points. Heather and Mercer going inside, drawing the foul. She'll have. I believe Perkins got that foul. Nope. Jenny Newhart on the foul. That's Newhart's first third team foul. Also, substitutions now coming in for IPFW. Wholesale one more time. Number 30 in the contest, Carissa Shriver. First time we've seen her in a while. Kim Recker back in the contest. Pam Edwards coming out. Uh, Wendy Recker in the contest as well. Perkins getting a rest. And Don Dressler out. Mercer on the line. Kentucky Wesleyan has four players that come in here averaging double figures. They're the double team. Wendy Recker ahead now to Kim Recker. This is Lindy Jones. Good defense that time by number 34, Jenny Boyd, to tie up Jones. This is Newhart inside. Laying back in a 2-3 zone. Kentucky Wesleyan now has given IPFW some problems. Lane violation. Teresa Shriver, three-second violation. She turns thought. the ball over, number five on IPFW. In the turnover department, they still have a one-point lead at 18-17, just nine minutes into the first half. Oh, <laughs> Carey didn't call glass oh, on that one, but man. she'll take it. Paige Carey, her second three of the game, nine points, leading score in the contest, and it's 20-18. I don't think I've seen a three off glass from the side before. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't a horse tournament either. That was game situation. Inside Newhart loose, but double team goes up with it strong. 
Nice little turnaround ties the game. Newhart's fourth point, 20-20. Don Dressler getting set to check back in for Lady Mastodons. This is Kim Bond spinning on Jones. Pretty spin move, and Jones picks up the foul. Might have got away with a walk there, but it was a good-looking move. That's Lindy's first foul. Bond got her on her hip. Steve, I really don't understand how this Kentucky Wesley team is 2-6 and six unless they're playing way over their head right now. Well, they've had problems shooting the ball most of the season, and right now they're getting the shots to fall. And usually during a ball game, that kind of evens itself out. They are much in the same boat as IPFW. They have six freshmen on the roster, three seniors, trying to balance experience and youth. Perhaps catching a hold a little bit here right now. Juan with a second coming. And she nails both. 22-20, Kentucky Wesleyan on top right now. Newhart over the zone, press that time. This is Kim Wrecker. Wendy Wrecker is in. Number 14 is Wendy. Number 54 is Kim. This is Wendy with the ball. Jones with the opening 18-footer. Dutching off the back. Newhard with the board, but foul. Lady Don's trail by two. Under 10 to go in the first half. Jenny Newhart leading rebounder right now with three in the game for IPFW. And Lexi Blue, number four. Talking about the freshman, here's another one from Owensboro, Kentucky. In the contest for Kentucky Wesleyan, she replaces Kim Vaughn, who is also from Owensburg. Oh, for two from the line so far tonight. And Steve, they list Lexi Blue as 5'6", but I do not think so. Blue now with the ball. She looks more like 5'2". She's going <laughs> to run the point. She's a recent uh, acquisition. Oh, my goodness. Mercer with a three. And we're going to have a silly reach-in foul. Getting a little momentum. Kentucky Wesley, 25-21 right now. 9.39 left in the first half. Second foul out in the backcourt like that. Well, a little bit of foul trouble right now for Kentucky with six. Team fouls in the half. We're only halfway through. This is behind the arc. Wendy Wrecker. They say her foot must have been on the line. They only give her two for that. Narrows the gap to two. 25-23. Carey going up. Drawing air. Scott knocks it back in. And this is Blue trying to save. And Wrecker was out of bounds. Good hustle by Wendy Wrecker. 15 in the shot clock as they still haven't hit the iron yet. Inside, Mercer doesn't get it to go. Jenny Boyd ripped down the board, and we're going to have an IPFW foul. That was a kind of a close call. It looked like Jenny had inside position, but the ball carried off to the side, and they call her for the foul. Long carom there. No, it's not a shooting foul. Newhart second. Team foul number five on IPFW. Michelle Conley is going to come in for her. IPFW in a 2-3 zone right now. Trying to work the ball inside. Kentucky Wesleyan has 15 on the clock. This is Blue outside. Took a step. Boy, Kentucky Wesley did well. That's only their fifth turnover in the contest. They had a couple right off the bat in the first minute and a half. But it is a turnover, and as you said, Steve, Jenny Newhar takes a seat on the bench. Michelle Conley now in. 25-23, Kentucky Wesleyan on top. IPFW jumped out 8-2. But an 8-1 run by Kentucky Wesleyan had them back in the game and in the lead, and Jones just turned it over. 
And that 2-3 zone, Steve, is really giving IPFW some problems. Their spacing is just a little too much in towards the basket. They're having trouble getting the ball inside like they like to. Spend most of the possession passing around the top of the circle. Kim Bond back in, and Sarah Victory, number 12, is in the contest for Kentucky Wesleyan. This is Mercer. She's one of the players that scores in double figures, so she will go to the iron and hits. She got a lane to drive in. Six for Mercer, and she's looking to pick Jones from behind. Jones, nice, nice bounce pass. Wrecker, her third point of the night on that basket. Nice assist from Lindy Jones. 27-25, Kentucky Wesleyan still in control. Dressler gets a hand on it, but Kentucky will retain possession. Amy Perkins back in for the Lady Dons and Pam Edwards. A little more experience. Although, Wendy Recker staying out of the court. Lindy Jones is the one sitting down, along with uh, Recker. Lindy started off quickly, had three quick buckets. First three minutes. Hasn't scored since then. Inside, Jill nice. Burness just checked in. Nice strip by Amy Perkins. Because uh, Burness had the ball inside if she could have corralled the pass. I think right now Coach Kleinfeld are just looking for a combination and a workout here. As Dressler makes the steal. Typical Dawn Dressler game. A steal here, an assist there. Turn around bucket when you need it. And there you go. A Don Dressler possession there. 27 all. 7.15 left in the contest. This is Bond blocked by Dressler. IPFW with a chance to take the lead. Conley inside off of Edwards' face. Pass a little strong. Kim, or, uh, Wendy Recker rather picks it up. Perkins going to carry. In traffic, turnover number seven for IBFW. And the score is still tied. Leading score is still Lindy Jones for the Lady Dons. She got those quick six points. She hasn't scored since, and she's got the uh, most points for the Lady Dons. Jenny Newhart with five. IPFW showing half court press. Lay back, back into man to man now. Going to try and double up on Jill Burness when possible inside. Three not going. Kim Edwards, or rather Pam Edwards, pulls down the board. Hit Chuck Marlowe disease. <laughs> 27 all. Now this is Conley working up top. Schreiber on the wing, outside record, going to reset with 10 seconds. Nice look inside, Conley assists record. Conley's first two, almost a steal, and we're going to get a foul on Wendy Recker on that one. Well, the next foul by either team will put both teams in the one and one First foul for Recker. Going to have some substitutions coming back in. They're coming fast and furious now. Some. There was some question on the referee's part whether there was going to be one and one or not. But uh, there was five team fouls at the time. So after the timeout, it should just be uh, Kentucky Wesleyan ball. Well, Kentucky Wesleyan takes a timeout. 5.59 here. Left in the first half. 29-27. Paid. It's been a good uh, game, Evan, flow-wise, uh, Steve. Both teams playing well. Paige Carey, eight points for the Lady Panthers. Uh, Heather McClellan with seven. They've hit uh, three three-point, but four three-point bombs in this half. Heather Mercer has the other one. We said they don't shoot very well, but they don't hesitate to shoot the ball. <laughs> no, they're getting good looks at the basket, too, which is always important. I think the Lady Don's still struggling to find an offensive uh, mix that'll work. Had a good flurry with the Dawn Dressler making some key plays just a bit ago, but they really haven't had anything consistent since uh, Lindy Jones got those six straight points to open the ball game. Well, the last couple trips down the floor, Kentucky Wesley went back to the man defense, and IPFW able to pound it down inside. Conley a bucket. Oh, 
Kentucky breaks the press. This is Kim Vaughn and Edwards filling the lane. If you're going to press, you've got to get back because once you get the ball in bounds, that's an easy, easy transition system or uh, opportunity for a team. Pam Edwards got back, got her hand in the passing lane. Burness, the lot pass inside. Someone's got to stop that play. Burness is six-one, and if they get that working, could be trouble. Going to have a push on Kim Vaughn and uh, Wendy Record going to the line with one on one. Third foul in that part of the court, the press is caused. This results in an easy scoring opportunity for the Lady Dons as Wendy Record looks for her first points of the night. She can untie the score. Mentioned earlier, uh, Wendy Recker, her third start. She's a freshman out of the Cal High School. Hits the first. <laughs> Don Dressler back in. Teresa Shriver out. Steve, uh, Wendy's hitting at 100% from the free throw line until I jinx her there. She was 3-3 three three before that one on the season. 66% for the season, I think. Three for three in the conference. You're right, I was looking at her three-pointers there, Steve. This is Vaughn with a three-pointer of her own. Dressler pulls down the board. Got Dressler with three boards now. This is Wrecker. 518 on the big clock, 20 on the shot clock. And back a little bit to a sag man. Edwards now inside, overplay by Harness. Nice power move by Pam Edwards to get her sixth bucket of the, her sixth point on her third bucket. She'll go to the line for a three point play. Nice move inside in the lane, and she just powered that ball up and drew the foul. She can give the Lady Dons a four point lead, something they haven't had in a while. I'm not sure who they gave that foul to. I thought it was Burnus. Burnus gave her too much baseline that time, and uh, it Edwards Carey. just spun. Ed, uh, Carey then picks up the foul. It's her first. 33-29 IPFW. Stretching out now to a four-point lead. Boy, not shy about taking the three. Edwards pulls down the board. Key possession here for the Lady Dons in this first half. A nice. Or take the outside shot. It was a good opportunity to run some clock and push in and look inside, but Conley hitting the 15 footer back the other way. Pretty right handed float shot that time by McClellan. She has eight. Pulls Wesleyan back within four. 35 31 IPFW lead. Four minutes left here in the first half. It's Conley inside. Dressler off the block, spinning no. And Burness pulls down the board. Foul on Conley. Reached in. Actually, I think they didn't call a foul. They just said that she touched it and slapped it on the baseline. So it's just it's just a Lady Panther ball. That is the call. Conley hit the ball and on the baseline. So Kentucky Wesleyan will get possession. Charge on the break. Boy, I tell you, Rachel Scott, she was going for the first down. I had no doubt about where uh, she was going that time. The radar locked in on the basket. Pam Edwards was rock solid in position. Still at four point lead, trying to get back to six. Dangerous pass that time by Conley. Dressler, though, open. Rebounded there by Jenny Boyd on the break. This is Carey. Paige Carey wants to go baseline underneath. Gets nice a step. Block. Edwards did not fall for the head fake. Third IPFW block of the half. This is Conley inside, getting good looks at the basket, but Rachel Scott pulls down the board.
walk. They didn't call it. Scott now looking inside. Ten on the clock. This is Bond working on Wrecker. Gets it. Got a friendly kiss off the glass or off the rim there. Rim and glass. Shouldn't happen in our court. Well, they call the shooter's roll, whatever it was, it cuts the lead down to 235-33 IPFW with 2.30 left on the clock. Three on the way, got it. Boy, no rotation on that shot, but clean ripping the boards. Three-pointer for Wendy Wrecker, six for her. Pushes the lead out to five. 38-33 IPFW. This is Vaughn now with the ball. IPFW back in the man. Brought Edwards out that time, and we're going to have a travel on McClellan. Turnover number seven for Kentucky Wesleyan. She took a little hip, hip slide with the feet there before she uh, got started with the ball. Lenny now Jones the, back in the contest for IPFW. Now the Lady Dines have a chance to open up a working margin here. Pam Edwards on the bench, back in for Kentucky Wesley, number 10, Heather Mercer. Number 40, Sharice Thompson. Tough shot. Baseline fallaway wrecker. Almost behind the backboard that time. Five for her, chance to make it an eight point lead. Jenny Boyd picks up the foul. And I really believe, Steve, if IPFW is able to pound that ball inside, they are going to run away with this contest. Three-point play pushes the lead up to 8, 41 to 33. Biggest lead of the contest. A nice run by IPFW here. Was tied at 29. Inside reaching foul on Conley. Not smart. Jenny Boyd going away from the basket. Didn't have to do that. Really, Jenny Boyd doesn't look at the, the 10 too much. He's only scoring at 5-5. So this is going to be a one and one for Boyd. Team is struggling like this. You don't want to give him any free ones either. Boyd hits the first. We'll have another. Her first point of the night. She's a senior. And gets them both. Lead down to six. Kentucky Wesleyan going to press. 130 left in the first half. 41-35 IPFW. Wrecker just inside the two point or three point line rather. That's a two pointer put up by Dressler. And it could be three. Her second three point play, the old fashioned way coming up here. Dawn in perfect position to get her fifth point of the night off the rebound. Once again, that shot seemed like it came a little early in the possession, but. Uh, Dawn was uh, ready for the rebound and can't make the three-point play, though. She has seven, however, and the lead back out to eight, 43-35. This is Carey. Kim Bond with the ball now. She's a good penetrator. Leaves it for Boyd, and Boyd drawing air. Rebounded out of there by Wrecker. Up ahead to Wendy Wrecker. Three on three is going to back it out. Use some clock. 20 on the shot clock. Leaner by Wrecker doesn't go. Carey pulls out the board. And Dawn Dressler going to pick up the foul. Kind of a cheapy call. Once again, the Lady Panthers get to go to the line for a pair of one and one, or for a one and one. Will be Paige Carey. I have her for nine points, Steve. Leading scorer in the contest right now. She had a free throw earlier. Yep. Okay. And a couple threes. We'll check at halftime for you on the stats. 
run down. Jenny Boyd coming out, Jill Burness back in. Hits them both. So he has at least 10 points. Back to a six point lead now. 40 seconds on the game clock. Now 20 on the shot clock, 13 second differential. Kim Recker to Windy Recker outside. He's got to take a shot. It'll be Lindy. Rebound inside. Kim Recker, no. Burness pulls down the board. 12 seconds. Plenty of time to get a good shot off. This is Carey ahead to Bond. Bond, baseline, yes. That's going to do it for the first half. Bond hits with three seconds to go to cut the lead to four. And what we didn't think was going to be a close game has turned out to be more than IPFW is bargained for. 43-39 at the break, Steve. Always got to worry about the situations like that when you've got a big game coming up and you're playing a scrappy team that really really has nothing to lose. They're 0-4 in the conference, so they're just playing on pride. And the Lady Dons, just, just a couple stretches where they played really well offensively. I don't think they've played too poorly defensively. That last, uh, that last trip down court, Really shouldn't let her get down to the baseline, but Wendy Recker at least didn't commit a foul. And she made a tough shot to close the gap to four. Well, IPFW had it out to eight, had a chance to get it to double digits before halftime. Kentucky Wesleyan held close. They won't Very go away. important stretch for them not to get blown out before halftime. Could be crucial down the stretch. We're going to take a timeout right now. It is 43-39 at the break. Be right back after this halftime show. Team spirit is alive and well at IPFW. That's because IPFW has established itself as an athletic power, not only regionally, but nationally. With 11 major sports, IPFW offers talented student athletes great opportunities. Success and support of IPFW athletics comes solely from the fans, students, faculty, alumni, and the prestigious Royal Dons Club. The Royal Dons Athletic Club has over 500 members who financially support IPFW athletics, enabling the university to provide scholarships to deserving athletes. Members will receive one or all of the following. Season passes to all sporting events, special seating, hospitality room, plus Royal Dons apparel and gifts. In May of 94, IPFW will host the Men's Collegiate Final Four Volleyball Championships. Royal Dons will be first in line to purchase preferred seating. Be a part of the winning tradition. Join the Royal Dons Club. We need your support. Call IPFW Athletics. Get into the team spirit. Die Welt verändert sich sehr schnell. Die De plus en plus, nous deviendrons tous partie d'une communauté internationale. Tout le monde aura une opportunité pour faire partie de ce cambio. Et 
If there is a common language in the world today, that language would be change. Sometimes evident, sometimes hidden, it is nonetheless constant. And when viewed through the eyes of the world, this change can be wide, sweeping, immediate, and profound. Yet when viewed through a different set of eyes, through the eyes of a child, this change can be personal and at times bewildering. Consider a child from another land whose family has come to Indiana, brought by an international company or organization to America's heartland. For this child, a changing world is felt at a personal level, a level of new language, atmosphere, customs, and new friends. There are more and more children like this one throughout the communities of Indiana. And part of the promise of the years ahead is that there will be many more. The coming international era, it has been called an era in which local economies, institutions, and industries around the world merge and interrelate to an extent far greater than ever before. It will be an era when Indiana's place in the world may depend upon the ability to remain open to the world around us and adjust our ways of thinking and acting. Recently, a group of citizens from around the state, representing many walks of life, came together to form the International Issues Task Force. A group formed with the purpose of determining and enhancing Indiana's ability to thrive in an increasingly international environment and prepare recommendations for the future. In part, the task force considered issues related to the Indiana business community, but their scope extended much further. Because at the heart of all changes are people, and closest to people are basic human issues. Issues that directly affect our ability to work and participate in an increasingly international atmosphere. With this in mind, the task force identified four primary areas of investigation. An international school, international service organizations and communications, international transportation, and international education. Each topic was studied by a separate committee, with ongoing staff support and administration provided by the Indiana Humanities Council. The intent of each committee was to determine how to best prepare the people of Indiana to become more valuable and productive citizens of the world community. The International School Committee investigated the feasibility of establishing an international school in Indiana a school which would serve the needs of Indiana children by creating the opportunity to learn in a unique, world-class educational environment. A school which would also serve the needs of the children of foreign business people, students, educators, researchers, and other visitors to Indiana. As the business of many Indiana companies becomes increasingly global, the need for an international school becomes ever greater because at the center of the needs of any family is the education of the children. Another task force committee investigated the statewide delivery of international services and information. Indiana is home to many different international service organizations. Yet a study commissioned by the Lilly Endowment revealed a need for these organizations to work more closely together. The task force committee investigated the needs of international employees and their families, foreign students, researchers, and the professional spouses of international executives to determine if services were readily available to international families. For example, foreign families often need special assistance in adapting to their new environment, obtaining driving licenses, learning where and how to meet American friends as well as other foreigners, and generally learning about a new culture. 
The committee also investigated ways to raise the consciousness of the people of Indiana by providing opportunities for exposure to international cultures through these service organizations. The committee then explored ways to best coordinate, fund, and deliver these needed services to international families as well as Indiana citizens. Central to Indiana's ability to be a vital part of a changing world is transportation. And a task force committee was formed to investigate the possibilities for increasing direct air transportation from Indianapolis International Airport to overseas cities and markets. Many Indiana companies, as well as international business people and visitors living in Indiana, currently need direct air service overseas. The committee not only studied this issue, it developed a strategy for pursuing greater levels of service. International transportation, an important way to more directly link Indiana with the world. The mission of the first three committees was investigating ways to make Indiana even more hospitable to foreign visitors, executives, employees, and families. The fourth committee investigated ways of preparing the youth of Indiana for the international era by studying the present educational system. The committee evaluated the teaching of world geography and culture, world history, foreign literature and foreign language in an effort to assure that Indiana students are provided with the knowledge and the skills to succeed in the international era. In many ways, the intent of the task force has been to provide a cornerstone, a cornerstone from which the state can begin to build and prepare for the future. A future that is rapidly approaching for businesses, for organizations, for families, and for all of us. It is up to us to shape our place in the international era by learning the language of the world, the language of change. The International Issues Task Force has provided an important first step for the people of Indiana a step toward becoming citizens of the world and making countrymen of all humankind. Everybody, welcome back to the Hilliard Gates Sports Center. Halftime of the IPFW Kentucky Wesleyan basketball game. It's a Great Lakes Valley Conference game. Kentucky Wesleyan coming in, Steve, 0-4 in the conference, 2-6 overall. IPFW 3-0. The halftime score there, you wouldn't know it. Yeah, it's a close ball game, closer than what we expected, and I'm sure closer than what the Lady Dons expected. But uh, we talked about the start of the game, the... Uh, Lady Panthers, not a good shooting ball club, but they uh, shot 50% the first half, including three of six from uh, three-point range, and that's real uncharacteristic for them. The Lady Dons, on the other hand, are a good shooting team, ranked second in the nation at 48%, and they've uh, shot 53% for the first half. So each team shooting the ball exceedingly well. Scoring for IPFW, the leading scorer right now, we have a couple of them. Pam Edwards with seven and Dawn Dressel with seven. Pam Edwards is just six points away from 1,000 points in her career at IPFW. So you might want to look for that. Rounding out the scoring, Wendy Recker has six. Lindy Jones, six. Jenny Newhart, five. Give Michelle Conley, six. I thought she only had four, but they give her six. Kim Recker with four and Amy Perkins with two. And uh, Steve, Kentucky Wesleyan, we mentioned before, four uh, people in double figures for them, much the same going on this game for them as well. Other stats we can look at, uh, rebounding, total rebounds for the uh, Kentucky Wesleyan Lady Panthers. They got 16 rebounds, only four offensive rebounds. 
Lady Dons, 16 rebounds and seven off the offensive glass. So the rebounding battle, pretty even. The Lady Dons having a, a better advantage on the uh, offensive glass. Leading Kentucky Wesley and Paige Carey with 11, Heather McClellan with eight, and Kim Vaughn with eight as well. Second half, Steve, what do you look for? IPFW to push the ball down inside Kentucky Wesleyan. Are they going to keep bombing from the outside, or what's going to go on? Well, I would imagine Kentucky Wesleyan will, will keep firing from the outside. That's where they had a lot of success, although they really haven't had a lot of success during the season with the outside shot, but they're uh, hitting well tonight. Lady Dons will have to uh, keep up the pressure on the perimeter. They've done a fairly good job of uh, defense inside, except in transition. And on the uh, other end of the court, the Lady Dons, uh, their strength is always the inside game. Work the ball on the Pam Edwards to Kim Recker and Michelle Conley. And uh, don't look for many outside shots. The Lady Dons took one three and hit it tonight. And if uh, they keep up the pace they've had this season, that's the last one we'll see in this ball game. But we'll have to see. Starting five for IPFW in the second half, Dawn Dressler, number 22, 44, Jenny Newhart, 54. Kim Recker, number 14, Wendy Recker, and number 20, or 32, rather, Lindy Jones. The five starters for Kentucky Wesley, number five, Kim Vaughn, number 50, Paige Carey, number 11, Heather McClellan, number 34, Jenny Boyd, and number 40, Sharice Thompson. So we're set to get the second half underway. Kentucky Wesley will inbound and try and cut into that four-point lead. This is Bond now with the ball. IPFW out in the man. Showed some 2 3 zone. Like a little hop step there on that uh, Jenny Boyd pass. McClellan inside. Boyd double team. Bond now with 10 on the clock. Going baseline. Nice move inside. Doesn't get it. And Wrecker comes out of there with a the board. Got lucky on that possession. They let her slip down the baseline, but she couldn't convert the shot, and Lady Dons clear the boards. Fourth rebound for record. Dressler going glass. Nine for Dawn. Long three attempt doesn't go. Another rebound for record. Nice block out on the long Karen from the three point shot. This is Kim Reck, or, uh, Wendy Recker rather now to Newhart. Aggressive man that time. And we're going to have a foul on number five, Kim Bond. Her Bond. second. Her second oh, foul. with six in the night, trying to extend the lead out to eight points. That's the biggest lead the Lady Dons are able to muster in the first half. Yeah. Lady Dons started the game like they were going to run away with it as Lindy Jones scored the first six points of the ball game. Seesaw ever since, more or less. Eight for Kim, or Wendy Recker. Boy, I'm really getting them mixed up right now. Kim Recker is the smaller Recker out of the floor, and Wendy is number 54. This is Kim Vaughn now, guarded by Wendy Recker. 47-39, just a minute and a half into the second half. Paige Carey on the drive to the hoop. The scoop doesn't fall. Duhard reaches out for the board. It's going to be tough for the Lady Panthers to drive inside and get any points that way, especially with the guards. First three possessions, three missed shots for Kentucky Wesley. Newhart going to draw the foul. Number 34, Jenny Boyd with the foul. That's her third foul. Boyd is the only player in any type of foul trouble. She is going to get a seat on the bench. Also in for Kentucky Wesley is number 10, Heather Mercer and Joe Burness. Jenny Newhart with five points on the night. One of three from the line, now one of four. Steve, IPFW on the night has hit just eight of 14 foul shots. 
now 9 of 15 as Newhart picks up her sixth point of the evening. Biggest lead of the game now, 48-39 for IPFW. This is Vaughn now, token pressure. Dresser wanted to double team. Vaughn breaks it inside. Wrecker got a hand on it. Newhart with a steal. I think it's important for the Lady Dines to come out and start this half playing really well. And so far, they're uh, playing well to the tune of 5-0. Inside, Wrecker in trouble. Dressler there. IPFW ball in the alternate possession. Burness and Dressler tied up. Lady Don's got a break without losing possession. And we're going to have a timeout. Timeout 48-39 right now, and IPFW stretching it out with a 5-0 run. Well, we've mentioned the name Wendy Wrecker, and this is her third start of the year. And uh, one of the reasons that she has uh, made the transition to uh, the starting point now is she's learning the offense, getting comfortable with her teammates. But this all started on a trip out to Texas where IPFW lost two times but came away with a renewed sense of team. Do mean team. Wendy Recker explains. Um, first of all, our team has a lot of depth. There's a lot of depth on the bench and the starters also have a lot of depth as far as um, talent. And um, when we did play in Texas, you know, traveling with each other and just being together, it seemed like we gelled, you know, after that trip. And we've won eight straight since then. So everybody has a lot of confidence in each other. And I think that has a lot to do with it. It's a game-by-game -game process. They know each player to a person that uh, you play them one at a time is the old cliche. But to keep a streak like this going, you can't look too far ahead because Steve, first half. You didn't expect Kentucky Wesleyan. Jenny Newhart with rebound basket. Didn't expect Kentucky Wesleyan to be this tough. No. But night in, night out, you got to expect a good team's best shots. Newhart fouled that time. Burness wanted to follow. That was in the cylinder. It popped back out. Burness now in a little bit of foul trouble. So the Lady Dines open the half with seven straight points to pull out to an 11-point lead. It was a third team foul. I beg your pardon. Burness only has one foul. Jenny Boyd, the only player in foul trouble. She has three for Kentucky Wesleyan. Diamond press that time by Kentucky Wesleyan. Four players in their half court. IPFW breaks it with a long pass. This is Dawn Dressler now. Looking inside, new hard swinging. Good looking development that time. Wrecker inside, doesn't get to go, and Bur Burness pulls down the board. This is Carey up ahead. Interception by Jenny Newhart, or deflected anyway to Dawn Dressler. Good play, bad pass. Forced that time, ninth turnover for Kentucky Wesleyan. They only had seven at the break. They were not beating themselves, and Burness picks up a late foul. That's her second. Newhart beat her to the spot that time, and Burness knew it. Heard that one up here. Well, IPFW stretching this one out, 50 to 39. Biggest lead of the game, Conley coming in. Kim Recker going to have a seat on the bench. Bad pass there. Eight turnover for IPFW. Paige Carey, open look, three, no. With the follow and Carey gonna pick up the foul. And boy, Steve, uh, Kentucky Wesley could do nothing right. I'd have to go back and check, but I believe that is seven. No, six missed shots and two turnovers to start the first four minutes of the second half. No IPFW points. IPFW has rolled out. 7-0 run here. Conley inside, blocked by Burness, rebounded out of there by Carey. They haven't scored, and they've committed five personal fouls to none for the Lady Dons to start the half. And it continues. Bond with a miss. Wrecker pulls out the board. It's a one on three. Wanted to swing it down inside to Dressler. Now this is Jones working out top against a man-to-man. -man. Dressler back to Jones, 18. Firing, yes. That's Lindy Jones' first point since the open, opening six points of the game. 
She has eight. This is Mercer loading up a three. Rotation in and out. Carry the fortuitous bounce and the bucket. Well, it took 436 for Kentucky Wesleyan to get on the board. First bucket of the second half, double team that time, and team foul number six, Carey, picks it up. That's three on her, and it sends uh, the Lady Dyes to the line with the next foul. So we could be shooting some free throws here tonight. Klein Kleinfelter checking on the official scoring. It is only six fouls. IGFW none in the second half. Barb Derry in the ball game for the first time tonight. Barb Derry started the season at point guard. She is only a freshman. She has given way to Kim Brecker, or uh, Wendy Brecker. <laughs> Steve just slapped me when I say that from now on. <laughs> Wendy Brecker, they are both in the contest right now. The lob into Conley doesn't go. Yep, calling Wendy on the, on the uh, push off foul on the rebound over the back. 52-41 count, 15.07 left in the second half. Pam Edwards coming in, Michelle Conley coming out. I don't think Coach Kleinfelder liked that shot that Conley took. In traffic, Conley with a force against two players. Lexi Blue, number four in the contest for Kentucky Wesleyan as well, number 25, Rachel Scott. Number 11 is Heather McClellan. She's the leading scorer coming in at 13 and a half a game. Only has eight. So Scott now. Three on the shot clock. Scott has to fire up a three-pointer. Turnover. That's a turnover. That never drew iron. The officials blew that call. Mercer with a miss, and Rucker comes out of there with a board anyway and a foul. Now we'll shoot and it's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. You're exactly right. That ball never came close to the iron. In fact, I think it was uh, might have even been partially tipped, but in either case, the shot clock expired. Alain Kleinfelter disputing the fact right now. Can't understand why the shot clock uh, violation was not called. And now once a one-on-one, -on -one, the officials trying to get that together. That is team foul number seven. are pleading innocent, didn't hear the buzzer. Well, the buzzer didn't go off, that's why they didn't hear it. Clearly, clearly on the other end, that clock ran down to zero even before Mercer put her shot up. That ball drew iron, was rebounded out with one second on the clock, and then uh, Mercer got the shot off three seconds later. Well, it looks like we're shooting free throws. We're gonna have a little conference here. They're explaining to Kleinfelter. Well, you can tell that ball, uh, the trajectory of that ball never changed. Well, everyone seems satisfied. Donnie Porch getting set to check in for IPFW, her first action in the game. I'll try and get uh, something concrete on the conversation down there in a moment. Racker hits the first. She now has nine points in the contest. Five eight freshman of uh, the Cal High School hits the second in Porsche. Dottie Porsche. And now for Jenny Newhart. Biggest lead of the game again. Once again, uh, 13 points, 54 to 41. IPFW is outscored. Kentucky Wesley before that Rachel Scott basket now narrows it to 11. Whistle. It was a 12 uh, 2 run by IPFW. Or 11 2 1 uh, run, rather. This is Edwards with the ball. She is only six points away from 1,000 in her career at IPFW. Barb Derry. Freshman out of Warsaw, Indiana. Picked up her dribble in trouble. Still 10 on the clock. Porch putting the ball down in traffic. Tie up, it will be. Kentucky Wesleyan ball. And then the turnover for IBFW number nine on the contest. Lexi Blue bringing the 
ball up, a late addition. She joined the club in December. Hasn't played that much yet. It looks like she'll see some playing time for the Lady Panthers during the rest of the season. Folks, following this contest, number four Kentucky Wesleyan in Division II will face the IPFW men. Heather McClellan getting off, 4-2. And we're going to have wholesale substitutions at the next available break in the action. There it is as Scott knocks the ball away from Mark Derry. Let's run him down quickly for you. Number 40, Sarish Thompson in the game. Now Paige Carey, number 50, in for Kentucky Wesleyan as well. well. We'll take care of the rest of it after this timeout. Well, we just got a little clarification on that last call. Uh, Ty Stauffer, the Kentucky Wesleyan coach, was wondering why the shot was reset on that. And uh, I guess he got an explanation that satisfied him. Fifty-four, forty-five, the count right now. Spoke with Don Dressler the other day and asked her uh, what her role in the court was. And got the answer. It's about a little bit of everything. Here's what Don had to say. Um, this year I've really tried to get the ball to people who are open. Um, my assists have gone up this year. Um, also my steals, really trying to hustle and get the ball. And um, of course that results in a turnover for the other team. And if we can capitalize on that, that's I think what's really helped. Steve, we saw that uh, Dawn talking there about how she's been able to do a little bit of everything. We saw that uh, two possessions where she came down, got a rebound, turned around, got an open jumper, hit the jumper, then got a block down at the other end and another rebound. She's a type of steady influence that this team needs. She is a senior. Wendy Recker with the ball to Lindy Jones. Dawn out there with the ball now. One of five seniors on this team for IPFW. This is a freshman. Wendy inside. Nice look to Edwards. Can't get it to go. Gets the rebound. And stays with it. Edwards now with, uh, make that nine points. Four points away from 1,000. 56-45. Dottie Porch guarding inside. Good move that time. Sharice Thompson getting on the board. First bucket of the game, cuts it back down to nine, and what do you know? McClellan into the scorer's table. It's five on four there for a moment. The Lady she's Dunn's back, couldn't take advantage. And now Kentucky Wesleyan doing what they wanted to do before, sticking around and going back to that 2-3 zone that gave IPFW problems. Working inside, nice baseline pass, porch inside, glassy no. And Sharice Thompson out of there with the board. Kentucky Wesleyan looking to make a run. Four new players in, they have fresh legs. Dangerous pass, Vaughn gonna reset, 20 on the clock. This is Carey, back outside to Vaughn, wanna get it inside for Ness, gonna swing it around to her one more time. Carey wanting to look for, puts up the three instead and rebounded out of there by Lindy Jones. The outside shot has deserted the Lady Panthers. They were hitting fairly well from the outside in the first half, but uh, they're, they're going back to their normal form and just not hitting the shots. Jones cutting down the lane. Hanging floater, yes, Jones with 10. Lead back up to double digits, 58-47, 11.36 to go here in the second half. Vaughn driving baseline, nice lead for Burness with the two. She cleared out Dottie on that play. Jones almost walking porch. Retains possession now. Jones going to give it to Recker. She's going to set up the offense. 18 on the clock inside Edwards. Burness. The overplay a little bit. Ports there. Weak side rebound. Jones another hanger. And that time off of McClellan. Fresh troops for the Lady Dons. Jenny Newhart, Kim Recker in. For Kentucky Wesleyan, Heather Mercer and Rachel Scott in. Therese Thompson, Paige Carey coming out. Dressler to trigger. Nine point lead for IVFW. This is Jones. 
Dressler now, baseline, wants to go inside. No secret what IPFW wants to do. Screen set that time, Wrecker for Jones, can't hit it. Wendy Wrecker, the board, and the bucket. Wendy Wrecker. I think Kim Wrecker kept that ball alive, tipped it out. Oh, and Wendy on the steal. Tenth turnover, Wrecker in for the lay-in, yes. Back-to-back -back buckets. Eight in the second half, 14 overall for Wendy Wrecker. Have to check and see if that is a personal high or not. Wendy quietly leading the team in scoring tonight. I believe she had 16. Last week, nice drive. McQuellen. This is Wrecker, might have got away with a push off behind the back, he has numbers. Lee for Newhart. And boy, I don't think Kentucky Wesleyan players want to be hugging the referee. It's 7-1 in foul, Steve. 62-51, the count right now, 10-03. Maybe their only recourse. 21 seconds left on the clock. Dressler open from 17. No. Newhart, the board. Couldn't get the roll. And Burness out of there with the board. Up ahead, this is Mercer. That's a three. Eberness with it, or scratch that. Rachel Scott with the board. Fresh shot clock for Kentucky Wesleyan. Short. Uh-oh, that ought to be a foul on 25. Rachel Scott reached around. I, I disagree with that, Steve. Good reach around that time. Scott. Well, I'd have called it a foul if I was roughing behind Wrecker, but the ball hit out of bounds, so IPFW, Newhart on the possession. Scott pulls down the board anyway at the other end. I think that was a quick shot. I can see what Ty Stauffer, the coach of Kentucky Wesleyan, wants to do. He wants to push it any opportunity he can, try and tire IPFW out. No look by Scott that time, and it is a turnover, number 11 for Kentucky Wesleyan. Good save by Kim Wrecker. Wesleyan setting up in that 2-3 zone. It is giving IPFW some trouble. They are not hitting well from the outside tonight. When they do push it down inside, getting good opportunities. This is Wrecker. This is Burness foul by Dressler over the back. We're starting to see the pattern we saw in the first half. The Lady Dons jumped out to a 7-0 run to start the half, and now they're just trading back at the buckets back and forth. Still lead by 11. Kentucky Wesley just refusing to go away, although time is starting to run out on him. Well, they're going nine deep on the bench, and they trade four players in, as they did the last break in the action. 8.39 to go. Back in the contest, Lexi Blue, number four, number five is Kim Baum, working on Wrecker right now, going baseline, pretty move, misses. Lindy Jones comes out of there with the board. Double team still in trouble. This is Wrecker. Up ahead to Dressler, have the numbers, two oh, on one. open. New hard. That is about as easy as they come. New hard now with 10 points on the evening. Back up to the biggest lead of the game, 13 points, 64. 51 IPFW. This is Blue, that's a two-pointer, yes. That's the Lakey Blue. Her first two for Blue. Kick, reset the shot clock. Fresh 30. Edwards back in the contest. Kim Rector coming out. I'm not sure on that last play if uh, one of the Lady Panthers wasn't out of position to have the uh, basket on guard, uh, guarded on the press. We don't see that this time down. Again, stacking it inside the free throw line, letting IPFW have the outside shot. Might have to change that thinking if Lindy Jones starts eating up. Six in the first, six in the second, 12 for Jones. Lady Don's trying to get over that 13 point lead hump. And IPFW. Good block out by Jenny Newhart, almost through an elbow. Wants to slow the pace a little bit. Side. This is Edwards going glass. Yes. yes. Two away. 
fact, Pam Edwards' next bucket, I think, will hit the 1,000 point for her career. It's quite a tribute to her to come back from an Achilles tendon injury. This is Bond. That's a two. And Newhart down with the board. Same type of injury that Dominique Wilkins had, and he has come back strong as well. Used to be the death of a professional athlete when you had that type of injury. Jones now from the outside missing. Newhart, strong board. Turn around, yes. Newhart. 12 for Newhart. The inside game really starting to show its strength now for the Lady Dines as they finally move out to a 17 point lead. 6.24 left in the half. Biggest lead of the game for IPFW. Starting to work. Kentucky Wesleyan down a little bit. Get the inside shots underneath. The College Cable Access Program Guide provides information about our programming, including IPFW Sports Telecast. To receive your free Channel 6 Program Guide, send your name, address, and zip code to Channel 6 at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, the zip code 46805, or you can call us at 481-6000. Thank you, Steve. Couldn't find the script there. <laughs> 17-point contest, as we mentioned before, stick around, uh, 8 o'clock, game on ESPN doesn't excite you. Uh, we've got Kentucky Wesleyan coming up there, number four in Division II, perennial powerhouse, national 2A, uh, uh, Division II champions, not 2A, I guess, two Division II champions coming in here tonight. IPFW struggling a little bit right now. They are 4-7. and seven. They need a conference win, and this would be a biggie. Be Kentucky Wesleyan. Uh, Last year at home was a super win, big crowd. This year, boy, if they beat Kentucky Wesleyan, it would have to be considered an upset. In the meantime, Matt though, come in at nine and one, Kentucky Wesleyan does. Lady Don still trying to dispatch the uh, Lady Panthers. Wendy Recker leading scorer on the floor for the Lady Dons with 14 tonight for the freshman. Try and check on that. I believe she had 16 as a game high earlier this year, but she has played well. Delivered the ball to the people where they have needed it and have an opportunity to score. That's a three by Bond. They have missed all their three-pointers after hitting three of six in the second half. And Pam Edwards goes to the line, and she can hit that 1,000 point with a couple free throws. Foul on 34, Jane Boyd, her fourth. In the game for Wayne, 12, Amy Perkins. She plays 14, Wendy Record. Well, Edwards will have a shot. Wendy Record coming out, Amy Perkins in. Hitting at a 69% clip is Pam Edwards with a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, and she misses. Conley had the board taken away from her by Paige Carey. Don't have the numbers. Two on three, and that time a blocking foul called on Perkins. Vaughn looked like she was expecting it to be called on her. And now the foul starting to even out just a bit. Shriver in for the Lady Dons. It's person, uh, Perkins ran the first foul. Well, Kentucky Wesley down by uh, 17. He has to get something going here in a hurry. They go to Burness, double team down low. They're going to have to do it from the outside. IPFW is not going to be beat on the inside. Jones got away with the travel. No, she did. demonstrating the slide step there for Coach Elaine Kleinfelter. Nice Nest, steal they want to go. That's the second time she's been double teamed. Edwards comes out of there with a the steal. They are going to have to beat IPFW from the outside. This is Perkins going to run some clock. See if they can get Edwards a shot. She was open for a second. Oh, wide open. Conley with a spin move from Shriver doesn't go. Blue, the smallest player on the floor, comes out of there with the board. She's Bond. Has Carey wide open. She's going to load. Nope. And they have missed five three-pointers. I have them for missing five three-pointers here in the second half. The outlet, Lindy Jones, lay in. Yes. That's it by Lindy Jones. 14 now for Jones. She ties a record for the team lead tonight. 
Jenny Newhart has 12, and Pam Edwards with 11. That might be all for Lindy Jones, 440, and the clock drifting away now. 72-53, biggest lead of the game. They do get it into Burness. She gets it off the glass and home. Matthew by Joe Burnett. I'm not sure if the team is aware of how close Pam is. You don't want to run your offense just to get one player a shot, but she needs the ball here to score. There she goes. Conley, nice pass inside. <laughs> Couldn't get the ball through the defense that time. Mark Derry in now for Lenny Jones. Couple of substitutions for Kentucky Wesley. Fresh faces. Connie Bibby, number 35, first time she's been in the contest. Sarah Vickery making her second entrance in the game. Played briefly in the first half. Conley off the inbounds. Boy, Kentucky Wesley falling asleep right now. Hello. Six for Conley. 19 point lead now for the Lady Dons. Blue inside, nice dish. Boyd going hard to the iron, draws the foul. See who gets it here. Boyd with two points on the night, just a couple of free throws. It hasn't been able to hit a shot from the field. She comes in, she was the second leading scorer at a 12 a game. had trouble operating inside the interior defense of the Lady Dons tonight. This is Boyd, hits the first, we'll have another. She has three on the night. Make that four and the lead down to 17, 74, 57, exactly four to go. Dottie Porchin for Pam Edwards, she's gonna sit down with four minutes to go. She has probably seen her last action of the night. Heard before, maybe Wendy Wrecker talking about the depth. Well, had 10 players get extensive playing time tonight for IPFW. This is Perkins inside. A walk, walk. I think she was a little surprised by the open space in front of her. It looked like a fake pass, and then she just decided to, to go with it. for Kentucky Wesleyan right now. At this point in the game, I don't think Kentucky Wesleyan has any thoughts of actually trying to win the ball game, but uh, they have just to continue to work on things and uh, try to improve for the next game. We mentioned Kentucky Wesleyan, a young team as well. Six freshmen for them. And for the Lady Dons, with their uh, matchup on Saturday, which we'll have here on Channel 6, they'll have to play a little better. We'll need some of that. Conley from the outside from 15. Vaughn with a jump step. Ripped by Derry from behind. Thought about the three. Vickery going inside. Glass, no. Porch out of there with a the rebound. Biggest lead of the game again. It's been 19 many times, 76-57. Timeout, Kleinfelter for IPFW takes the timeout. In the eight, Take the timeout right now to put some players in that we haven't seen before. Tara <laughs> Mazzillo. Mazzillo. Uh, she's from the same high school as Wendy Recker. And we, we checked in with Wendy before. Her third start of the year, we asked her, uh, you know, why uh, why now? Why are you in the starting lineup now? She said, simple, it's just a, a, another step up. You have to make the transition. Here's what uh, Wendy Recker had to say about that. Um, one of our goals is take one game at a time, and w in doing that, we're able to concentrate on each opponent you know, as they come along. So I think that helps us with um, keeping our streak going. Back to live action. Schreiber with a rebound off of a miss. Fouled before the attempt will be going to the line for a one and one. Bibby the foul, her first, first appearance in the game. Schreiber can give the Lady Dons that 21 point lead, biggest of the night. That is one thing IPFW is going to have to work on. We'll get the free throw stats later on for you. 
chance before we go off the air. Still a 19 point lead, two and a half to go here. This is Blue with the ball. Man to man defense, IPFW. Near steal by Amy. Looks like IPFW on the way to nine straight. 11 and two, four and zero oh in the conference. Torch on the block. They'll fall to two and seven on the season and 0 and five in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. Play a little ragged now. I don't think that's the designed offense. Ripped that time by Missoula. <laughs> Looked like a good block, but I think she got her with the body. She picks up the foul. And Boyd's seen that all night, someone in her face. She'll have to get her points again from the free throw stripe. She's four out of four, but way off her average of the season. Six for Boyd. Marcella Alba is in now, number 33. Marcella Alba. I was hoping we wouldn't have to pronounce that name. Well, I, I looked down <laughs> in the minutes. I didn't see she was getting much playing time, yeah. so I didn't go and check on her name. This is Schreiber inside, bodied up, going glass, doesn't get the ball. Scott rips down the board. This is Blue. Has numbers. And Perkins out of there with the board. 17 point lead, a minute and a half to go. Derry cruises in, layup, yes. Derry gets into the scoring column with her first two. Just a workout now. Navilia misses that time. Drawing nothing. Klein, uh, Coach Kleinfeld are taking a timeout. Going to get some more players in for the contest the first time. Sue Gamble and Lori Reinhardt. Once again, a couple of freshmen coming in. Channel 6 is now accepting applications for underwriting the television of IPFW sports events and other programs. For more information about how your business or organization can utilize this opportunity, call the Channel 6 business office during business hours at 481-6000. And I'm sure they'll be happy to get in touch with you. Of course, the IPFW men's volleyball team getting ready to gear up. They're number four in the nation in the preseason polls. That all starts next Friday. Live on Channel 6, University Pacific versus IPFW. And then Saturday night, you don't have cable, you can watch it on 33. Number one and defending UCLA, uh, or defending champion UCLA in the house. Saturday night for IPFW. Foul on uh, Sue Gamble. Turned the ball over, then got the foul, trying to get the ball back. Under a minute to go now. Lady Dons have this one safely in their back pocket with a 19-point lead. Coach Kleinfelder has to be happy about what you saw transpire in the second half. A 7-0 run to start it. Good, solid defense, and they worked the ball inside. High percentage shots. Got out to a comfortable margin and kept it out there. This is Blue missing. Rebound inside, Scott, foul on Missoula. This last minute could take a bit. Checking the scoring, Lindy Jones and Wendy Recker, the co-scoring leaders tonight, they each had 14. Pam Edwards, a bucket away from 1,000 points with 11 tonight. Kim Recker with six, Conley with eight. Dawn Dressler had nine. We have Amy Perkins for a bucket and uh, Barb Derry up the bucket a little bit ago. I will try and get in contact with Wendy Recker after the game. She's the player of the game for IPFW. 14 on the night, a boatload of assists. We'll try and get the final stance on her as we go. But another solid performance by the freshman. This team is starting to develop now. Reinhardt in, blocked by Scott from behind. 30 seconds to go. Scott, we've seen her take the ball to the hole before. And, uh, well, We'll let that one go. This is Reinhardt now working down inside. 
Mazzullo loading up from 17, no. Nice rebound. Got the board inside and the foul. Great position, slipped in there, got the board, got the foul. The other end, Rachel Scott was just so winded. She <laughs> ran out of gas by the time she got to the rim. Good effort tonight by Kentucky Wesley to keep it close in the first half. Just came out, missed their first seven shots in the second half, had five fouls. Didn't score for the first 436. By that time, IPFW had built a 13-point lead. That was ball game. Maintained it down the stretch. And a big lead now, biggest lead of the game. I believe it's 79, 59, 20. And this is it right here. Scott beats the buzzer. Oh! Yes! Oh! Well, she should have pulled up last time down. It's a three. <laughs> Coach Elaine Kleinfelder has to smile anyway. 17-point victory. 79-62, your final IPFW once again. Dying straight now. 11-2 overall in the season. 4-0 in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. That sets up a big one. Undefeated Southern Indiana coming in Saturday night. Should be a good one. 6 o'clock for the Great Lakes Valley Conference lead. We'll try to get a word with uh, Wendy Recker in a little bit. She is the player of the game for IPFW. Take a break right now. Your final score, 79-62 IPFW, the winner. How can you find out when lightning may strike? And how do you count the fish in the sea? How can you tell if a child is growing normally, if baseball is getting better, or traffic is getting worse? How do you know about stock market trends, the risk of cholesterol, the history of witchcraft, or the future of spacecraft? With statistics, that's how. And how can you find out about statistics? With the new statistics series, Against All Odds. Children are the largest group of Americans living below the poverty line. They have to reach higher for what others take for granted. Health care, balanced meals, encouragement to learn. But with help early on, children in your community can gain the skills to get out from below the poverty line. It takes programs like Success by Six and people like you to help them take the first step. Call to learn more. Change the world of a child and you change the world. two millennia, Western society has generated a rich visual tradition of painting, sculpture, and architecture. What do these images mean? How can we understand them? Art of the Western world will take you on an exciting journey that will suggest answers to these and other questions. Beginning in ancient Greece and ending on the brink of the future, it will examine many of mankind's most enduring artistic achievements. That new dummy cam is great. Yeah, it'll sure give people a whole new outlook on what it's like when you don't wear a safety belt. Oh! Yeah! I think they'll get the picture. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. We at IPFW are pleased to be able to bring you cable casts of NCAA athletic competition. We hope you've enjoyed the show and the excitement of intercollegiate sports from IPFW. To provide such programs, we need your support. With the help of many volunteers, we're able to produce these programs at a relatively low cost. Your contribution will help defray the production costs not covered by the Channel 6 budget. The College Cable Access Center invites you to invest in quality college programming by sending your contribution to 
Channel 6 at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Please make your check out to the Indiana Purdue Foundation at Fort Wayne and designated for the College Cable Access Athletics. 7962 IPFW Lady Don's a winner. Let's take it down to the floor with Paul on our player of the game, Wendy Rucker. Joined now by player of the game, Wendy Rucker. 14 points tonight, not your season high. Had 18 beforehand. She dealt out a lot of assists, got to the ball, the, to the person when they needed to have it, the opportunity to score. Great game out there tonight, Wendy. What was going on for the team out there in the second half? In the second half, um, we decided to pick up our defense a little more. In the first half, we were a little tentative and we just got out there and we hustled, were more aggressive, looked for a good shot selection, and um, I don't know, just our overall hustle and aggressiveness was picked up for okay. us. It's only your third game out there right now as a starter. Are you starting to get comfortable out there, feeling your role, the team a little better? Um, yeah, I'm real comfortable out there. Uh, the girls, that everybody on the team, you know, makes every position comfortable. So it's real easy to play with people of this caliber. It's a little bit different from high school, but it's it's a lot of fun. Okay, last question here. I'll let you go. Uh, Nine straight now. You got a big one coming up, Southern Indiana. Right. Any concentration on that right now? Have you done um, a little preparation for them? Well, we're going to do some more tomorrow night in practice, but they, we know they're a real physical team and just got to get tough and uh, just keep on doing what we're doing. Okay, appreciate it. Wendy Recker, the player of the game, 14 points and a load of assists. You're going to see a lot more of this young lady as the season wears on. Thanks. Let's go back upstairs to Steve. He'll wrap this one up for you. Once again, once again, 79-62, the Lady Dons a winner tonight. Wendy Rucker and Lindy Jones, 14 points each. Briefly, the story of the game, uh, shooting. The Lady Dons continued the exact same shooting percentage in the second half as they had the first 52 or 53%. And uh, the Lady Panthers hit 500 for the half as well, so they shot 50%. But uh, rebounding, uh, IPFW 45-34, to 34, an edge there. 18 offensive to only nine offensive rebounds for the Lady Panthers. And uh, that's pretty much the story of the game. The Lady Dons uh, cruise into the Saturday's game where they face uh, undefeated Southern Indiana. Both teams undefeated in the conference. It's a game for first place. But coming up in a few minutes, the uh, Mastodons take on highly ranked Kentucky Wesleyan's men's basketball team. That game is coming up shortly. We'd like to take this time to thank the Channel 6 volunteer crew and the Learning Resource Center at IPFW for their contributions to the live production of our basketball games this evening. The telecast of this IPFW sports event is copyrighted and the sole property of the College Cable Access Center and IPFW. Unauthorized duplication, exhibition, retransmission, rebroadcast, or other use of this event without the express written consent is strictly prohibited. Don't forget to tune in to Channel 6 Saturday evening, January 15th at 5.30 to see the University of Southern Indiana Screaming Eagles take on both the women's and men's teams from IPFW. Of course, once again, the men facing Kentucky Wesleyan coming up in a little bit. That's it for now. Goodbye.